Okay, um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, as usual, um, if anybody uh, joins us, if you have any questions, um, just go ahead and you know let me know, say them out, or, or put them in the chat here. So this week we're we're supposed to be wrapping up our second unit. So you know you should be done with your textbook readings and have looked over chapters three and four of our course textbook. Um, but, you know, and, and I mean, I hope everybody has, has been working on the second program assignment. So you'll find that you need to do more for this one than you had to do for the first one. Um, and I was mostly planning on going through that, seeing if, anybody, if people had questions on that. Uh, but yeah, and maybe talk a little bit about the second program assignment here a bit. So, um, but, but, you know, besides that, so we will have our second test at the end of this week um, on Friday. And um, you will, um, um, and, and it's basically covering chapters three and four here. So, um, all right. So, so yeah, like I said, I, I was planning on kind of maybe going over the assignment a bit. Um, see if people had questions on that. Um, make certain, I mean, I mean, hopefully people have started uh, because this one will take a bit of time, but um, um, but I was planning on maybe uh, 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 showing a few things to get started with here. So the, you know, we have the same structure on this one as we did for the first assignment, um, as we do for all the assignments. So it's so the same general structure, it's, it's a simulation. So just uh, some kind of overview of this we're trying to implement the basics of a um, of, of a uh, of an operating system that manages processes through um, we're mostly focusing on three of the five states so the, so manages processes through the the ready running and blocked state although you know you might need to use all five states uh, in this assignment because you, uh, you you probably really don't need to have processes in, the, in a new state. So immediately when you create a new process, you'll just make it ready and put it onto your ready queue. Uh, and likewise, uh, when, when a process is done, you'll probably, you probably want to keep it around and just put it in a done state um, when a process finishes. So. But, but that, that's, that's kind of the basic thing that we're doing here is, is we're going to be simulating um, managing a set of processes by an operating system and those processes are running, maybe doing IO, so they become blocked for a bit of time um, and, and, and they become unblocked and, and that type of thing. So, um, so let's look at the tasks here. Um, so the, the first task um, is just implement some getter functions for this assignment. Let me go ahead and bring that up here. So as usual, we should always start by opening up the project at the, the, the top level. Let's see what I got here. And then making certain everything is building and, and, um, um, and your tests are running. Here, let, me, let me close off everything here. So let's close off this folder and reopen uh, everything. All right. So, you know, when, when you first start off, you want to, you know, do a, an open folder and make certain that you open um, at the top level, you know, so we've gone over this before on these kind of help sessions. Um, so the way that Visual Studio is set up is, is to um, uh, handle all these projects um, using one set of configurations. So, so you just want to open it up at the top level and then just open up the files for the particular project that you want to um, work on here. So let me close off these ones I had open before. So anyway, um, once you open that up, you know, you always want to, the, your first thing should be to, to make certain that everything compiles and runs correctly. So let's, um, let's open up the tests here. Uh, let's do a clean control shift C, clean everything out. 
make, start, we're start, make certain we're starting from a clean slate uh, and build. Um, and as usual, um, I'll take a little bit of time to build my tests here. Um, this um, catch framework is a little bit big, so it often takes quite a bit of time to compile the, the one with the unit tests in here. Um, in this um, second assignment, all of these tests in the first test case uh, should actually be pop, uh, passing. So the, these are just um, testing that um, the the basic processes, uh, the basics process class can be constructed correctly um, and you can do things like um, um, check that it started off created in the ready state initially and some other stuff like that. So your first things that you're going to be writing actually start with the second unit test, which uh, this first one is, is a little bit big. So, so um, it actually starts down here with um, where we create a simulator um, and uh, call some of the getter functions. So, so you're going to start by implementing the these get time slice quantum, get next process ID, and, and so on, right? Um, so this is still compiling here. So while this is compiling, um, so as, as I said in the assignment description, uh, probably everything you'll need to, to add and, and create for the second assignment, you'll, you'll be doing all your work in the process simulator. Um, HPP and .cpp file, okay? Um, if, if it makes it easier for you, you, you could maybe make some changes to the process or process state class, um, but, uh, but you probably don't have to. Um, you know, it depends on kind of how you implement things. So that we're finally done compiling the tests. Now we're compiling the rest of the stuff. There we go. So everything should compile cleanly when you first start off. Um, and actually it should run, uh, like I said, and um, your first failing test should come all the way down here to line 156, I think. So let's try it. We just did a control shift B to build and then we'll do control shift T um, to run our tests here. And so, yeah, the, the first failing test will be down here for the get time slice quantum. So that's the first thing you're supposed to implement um, for this assignment here. Um, so let's open up the process simulator. Um, I might come back here, or if anybody wants to have a question about things, I might come back and look a, a little bit later about the process and the process state. But I just want to make certain that we at least kind of talk about this first task here. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're first um, failing um, because we're calling the get time slice quantum, um, and we're expecting that. Um, that you return that the time slice quantum um, has a value of five, okay? Uh, but um, the code that's been given to you, um, it's returning a zero here, okay? So anyway, the, the, the param when you create one of these process simulators, it takes a single parameter in the um, constructor. So let's look at the constructor here for our process simulator. Um, so there's, there's a single constructor and it takes a time slice quantum. So, and in your test, we're setting the time quite time slice quantum to be five, right? So if we look at the implementation for our constructor, I mean, it doesn't do anything, right? Um, so let's say, I mean, you'll need to initialize the member variable for the time slice quantum to be the value that's passed in here. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of one, one thing that you'll need to do. So, uh, again, let's, let's go back and look at, you know, so besides the, these, the, there's only, what, four parameters, uh, but you might need to, for this assignment, you will need to add in some more member, uh, param sorry, some member variables um, here. So, at a minimum, you're going to need to add in like a queue for your ready queue. 
um, and maybe you'll probably need another queue or a list or something to keep track of the blocked processes maybe uh, in here and you might need to add some other things. So. Uh, but notice that, yeah, time slice quantum is, and, and uh, system time are both variables of type time, but this is just a type def. So if we go back and look up um, um, here, are these are probably type def over in the process um, or process state.hpp files. So let me go ahead and open those up here. I can't remember which one it was, but if we go look over at process.hpp, um, Here's our process class. So, and, and yeah, this is where we have the type defs for things like time uh, and event ID and things. But, but uh, the, these like time is just an unsigned integer and the process ID is just an unsigned integer. Okay, so if you've never done a type def, it's really just like an, an alias or a name, right? So this is tr it's trying to make our code more readable. Right, so it's all these are just unsigned integers, but we use you should you should be using these names. If you have something that represents um, a time, you should be using the the, the type def time instead of unsigned int. Okay. So yeah, that, that's where the this time and the PID are, are coming from here. So, so again, these are just regular integer, well, unsigned integers for these and unsigned integer for the, the PID as well. So, um, so back to our description of the assignment. Um, so you need to start by with that constructor um, that, um, uh, you, that initializes the time slice quantum um, and you might want to go ahead and initialize uh, these other member variables, you know, so, so stub these out to initialize it to zero, right? So like I said, start by hard coding these to the expected initial values that you need just to get the tests passing, right? Um, so we can do this, and so I was, I was planning on doing this so we can maybe get like all this first unit test passing, right? So. Uh, so for this very first one, um, if, if we go back and look at what the get time slice quantum does um, in the process simulator.cpp, we can search for it or, or um, scroll down here. Oh, th oh, this is stubbed out as well. So this is just returning zero. So even if we initialize the value, um, it's going to be returning zero. So we need to both initialize the value and return um, our member va variable value to get this very first failing test to pass here, right? So we can do something like um, set our time slice quantum. So again, I, I don't remember if I talked about this last time, but this is a common kind of um, idiom that you'll see uh, when you're doing programming classes like this. So here we've got a variable, a parameter to the, to the constructor called time slice quantum, which has the same name as the, um, the member variable, time slice quantum, right? So, we could either disambiguate by giving a different name to the parameter here. So, um, so a common thing is to say something like a time slice quantum. And then, and then we could say, you know, the, 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 the time slice quantum for the class is equal to, or maybe a better name would be the init time slice quantum. If I wanted to give a more meaningful name, the initial time slice quantum. So you can do that, right? So that, that just, we just use a different um, name for the parameter. So that disambiguates um, the name of the parameter and uh, the name of our member variable, time slice quantum. Or, you know, again, you know, you should, you should understand why this works here um, because you'll see this a lot. So uh, instead I can just use the same name, but I can disambiguate by using this. So in C++, this is a special keyword, um, and so we can use that to explicitly refer to 
member functions and member variables of this object that we're working with here. So this, the way I read something like that is I'm saying that the, the member variable for this object called time slash quantum, we want to assign it the value that's passed into the parameter named time slash quantum. So either way it should work. And then I'm fine if, if you prefer it the other way, give it a, diff a different name to the uh, parameter here. So. Um, but yeah, so that won't quite allow the test to pass because so we could rebuild that and run it. So we don't see any, any um, we'll see that it just rebuilds the process simulator. Um, but if we run the tests, um, we'll still be failing that first test at line 156 because not only do we need to initialize a member variable, but we need to return that for get time slice quantum. So again here, I could return this time slice quantum, but since, it, since we don't have like a, a local variable or a parameter with that same name, there's no ambiguity. So I could just say also just return uh, time slice, not size, time slice quantum. And, and we'll have no ambiguity here again. So, so since I have no other variable named that in the local scope, it'll assume that I mean um, the member variable of this object, so, so the member variable called time slice quantum. Right? So that should have the effect if we rebuild um, and we run our test, uh, then I can at least get my first test to, to pass here, right? So now the one at 156 isn't failing um, because we've successfully initialized the value and are returning it for the getter method, right? But, None of the rest of these are. So we need to do something similar for the rest of these, but for all the rest of these, we want to initialize um, things. And uh, now that I look at it, you might also have to add in. So like, um, oh no, that's not true. So, so you know, I, I've given you the system time, the, the next process ID, uh, but nothing else. Um, oh, and, and number of finished processes, right? But I didn't give you like the number of active processes as a variable. The reason why I didn't give you these is you might want to do these dynamically. So um, to find out the number of active processes, you might want to, I don't know, query your ready list or something like that. Or you might need to have another um, data structure, which is, is a list of your um, all the processes in your system. So your process control block, uh, like we talked about for our um, in our textbook uh, for chapter three about um, processes and manage processes and talked about process process control blocks and the ready queues and and things like that right um, so let's do the easy ones here so um, we're expecting that the system time should start off at one so we want to initialize system time to one we're expecting that next process ID should be one initially so we should initialize that to one and when we initially start a simulation, no process should be finished. So, so we want to initialize the number of finished processes to zero uh, for the three that I've given you. Right? So again, if we initialize all those in the constructor, So it should initialize, so I mean, that's what a constructor does. It initializes member variables at, at when, when the object is created. So in this case, we need to initialize the state of our simulation um, when we're creating one of these process simulators. So um, what I say, so we wanna set the um, system time, um, Number of active processes and the next process ID. All right. Num active processes, num finished processes. Uh, we don't have a num active process, right? So 
so yeah, again, notice I didn't use the this. I could have used the this on all these. Um, so there's no ambiguity here since there's no local variable or, no, or parameter name, any of these. So maybe for consistency, um, um, I might want to do that here. But it should work either way. All right. So uh, at least for these three things, then um, although I guess we need to look at the the um, we need to look at the implementation. So again, these are just stubbed out to not be returning anything. Um, um, or well, the get next process ID is is, is stubbed out to to not return anything. Um, because um, this one actually needs to do some work, um, I believe. So later on, we're going to use get next process ID to actually get one, but then increment the process ID whenever you're creating new processes. So let's see here. Um, but let's just initialize that to one here. And, and um, I think we come back to that, or you have to come back to that later on, on like step two here. Right, so um, so anyway, by initializing those to you know next process ID, we, we initialized to one um, system time. We initialized to one, and number of finished processes we initialized to zero. So that should allow at least these to, to pass for us as well. Um, the ones that I just mentioned. So if we build. And run our tests again. So now our first failing test was down to 186. Um, probably because I've got all the rest of these stubbed out here, right? So like um, get number of active processes is expecting zero in this initial test. Um, and if we look at that, we're returning zero. Um, the running process is, is expecting that uh, initially the, the, the CPU is idle. So um, if we look at um, running process, um, um, it's stubbed out to return idle. So you can leave those for now. So yeah, it actually gets through all those. Oh, it actually gets all the way through the first um, unit test just by um, leaving those stubbed out there, okay? So that, that was kind of basically what the first task told you to do. Um, so the first task was getting all these to, to finish. Although, you know, a lot of these functions aren't written yet. They're only really stubs. So some, some of these getter functions and some of these like running process, you're going to have to come back and actually implement once you have uh, your ready queues in there and, and something, things like that. So. So let's see, the, the first one that's failing, if you did follow what I did, is it actually will get down here um, um, right. So it's so our second one, we're gonna be simulating uh, that you can handle new events. So a new event, whenever new occurs, you're supposed to be creating a new process and adding it to the system to be managed. Okay, and so that's what the calling new event is supposed to do. So let's read the assignment description here. Um, so this, this happens whenever a, a new occurs in the simulation, okay? Um, so basically what you need to do is create a new process, assign it the correct next process ID, uh, make the pro so so ready the process so put it into a ready state, um, and then add it to the end of your ready queue. Um, so. So 
so let's let's look at it. So um, um, so here when we're calling new event, um, so there should be a new event function here in the process simulator. So this is going to be called every time uh, a new occurs um, in a simulation. So um, I haven't looked at any of these sim files yet, although uh, those are shown in the um, um, in the assignment description as well. So this is an example of, of the simulations that are occurring for the second assignment. So, um, and I've already given the code that can open up and read through these. So anytime a new occurs, that means a new process has to be created and added to the, your system that, you know, so that we're simulating managing processes. Um, and then the other events here are like CPUs represent the simulation of a single CPU cycle happening. Uh, blocks in the, uh, simulate um, a process doing some I/O and, and needing to be put into a blocked state. You know, again, this is all stuff that that um, is talked about in Chapter Three about processes and, and the the five and seven state process diagram. And unblock is kind of the opposite of block. So um, a process that's currently blocked uh, will go back to a ready state when it becomes unblocked. Uh, and then finally, done. Um, for a running process, if a process is running um, and a done happens, um, it'll the, the process should be finished. Um, so it's, uh, it's kicked out of the system. It, it, it's no longer a running process. So it should be put to a to a finished state or a done state. So, so anyway. Um, So down here we've got our new event. Um, so this is the the thing that was being called first here, right? Um, so what we want to do is we want to allocate the next process ID um, for the new process, um, and um, we want to create a new process um, and add it to our process control list. Um, or process control block. Um, and you need to initialize the process with the current system time. So, so you know, this keeps track of, uh, so every process when it's first created, keep, uh, remembers the, the system time when it first entered the system so we can calculate statistics on it and so on, right? Um, So there's lots of ways that, that um, um, we could um, do these things here. Um, let's, um, um, but you know, again, I encourage you to maybe do these step by step, right? So, so before we maybe think about how we might add a ready queue or a process control list, um, let, let's just you know look at the, the get, next, get next process ID. So it's expecting, that um, we assign um, the process ID for whatever the, the next process ID should be assigned to this new process. So currently our next process ID is set to one, right? So we could do something like say, um, So we might want to assign the, the next process ID to this process that we're currently creating, all right? So assign the next process ID for this new process, right? And then by incrementing the next the, the member variable next process ID, that should actually make this happen because remember our get our getter for get next process ID just returns the that member variable next process ID. So it should be two after we increment it here. If we build that and run it. Um, oh, um, so since I didn't use my variable, um, uh, it's not gonna let me compile here. Oh, another thing is this really is an example of a, a PID. And if you look at, uh, but remember that's just the type def, one of those type defs for an unsigned in. But, Again, to make the code more readable, we, we should be saying that we're expecting this to be one of these PID types, 
these unsigned integers. Uh, but the other thing here, um, uh, yeah, so since we're, we don't need it yet, I'll just comment that out so I can compile it. Um, so all I really want to do is increment this so I can get my next test to, to pass here. So that, that compiles, um, and we can run our tests, of course. So here, um, you know, so, so as you would expect, the, um, um, we're passing the test at line 186, but now we get down here. So get num active process is just a stub, so it's returning zero. So what this is implying is that we need to keep track of and somehow be able to answer the question, how many, how many total processes do we currently have uh, in our system under management, right? And there should be one now instead of zero. So at this point, you could implement like your process control block. So we could maybe like create an array or use a standard template library. And that reminds me, I, I think I'm, I'm, I, I did, I mean, you really should be using the standard template library. And if you haven't used that before, um, you might wanna learn it uh, now if, if you're not using it. I mean, you, you could probably just make an array of processes for your process control block, um, but um, that might not be a real good solution here since we're using C++ and classes and things, so. Um, so, here though, we're, we are expecting, so, so, okay, okay. Uh, so I, I could get this test to pass. I could, we, we could like um, add um, another um, member variable to our process simulator. Um, so keep track of of the number of uh, total processes, the number of active processes in the system here, All right? So if I wanted to, and, and you know, I should probably initialize that in our constructor for the class. So we might want to um, go back to our constructor at the top. So initially, there's no active processes either, like there's no finished processes. Uh, but um, when we create a new process uh, or a new event, um, the number of active processes would go up by one. So we should have a new process at this point, right? Or at least if, if I do that, that, that would be enough to get, um, if get num active processes, uh, we'll probably have to change the, the, uh, the getter method because it's probably just stubbed out to return zero, right? So, um, so what I've done so far, we want to find that getter then. Um, right? So if we return that, um, that would probably allow this to um, pass here, right? Let's build that and see if it does. So, Let's see what time, 3.36, okay. So I think uh, maybe I'm gonna show, so, so here, this, this is probably the first thing that our, our next test here that's gonna force us, you know, because basically what the get process is supposed to be doing is returning an actual process object, right? So we need to not only create a process with process ID of one, but we need to save that in some sort of a data structure so that when get process is called, we can access it and return it. Right. Um, so I don't know how, why I had to rebuild the, um, the the tests there, but yeah, as usual, it's going to take some time to to rebuild the tests. Um, so 
So I'm probably going to use just a regular standard template um, list maybe to, um, uh, to be my process control block here, just as a real quick example, right? Well, I'd kind of like to get this to compile and show that it gets past this point here. But let's, let's, um, let me, um, let's uh, bring up a little bit of documentation here. So I usually use, um, I, I'm pretty certain I've got links for um, this, um, Um, so I usually use like c++.com or something like that. So if you just look for um, like STL list, uh, it'll, it'll probably usually be like the first one or something like that. So, you know, this is just reference documentation, but um, if we want to create a list, so a list is, um, um, or in this case, maybe a vector might be a better idea. Um, so for a list, we can, um, um, just push onto the back. Uh, we can actually push onto the front as well. Let's, let's try a vector maybe as, as an example instead. So, um, Or, oh, I know. Um, there, there's actually an array container in C++. This, this is the closest thing to the just plain C++ arrays that you might be used to using. So if we create an array, um, the, it's really supposed to be a fixed size aggregate. Okay, so uh, so I didn't really say I, I didn't really give like an upper limit on this assignment. Uh, but, but um, you know, so it, it would probably be better to use something that's not fixed size. So in, in case we run a really big simulation, you don't have like an upper limit on the number of processes that your simulation can handle. But um, we, we can maybe start with um, uh, like just a simple array here. Um, So let's see here. Um, I want to get an example of the constructor. Oh, there it is, probably. So, so yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So basically, for an array, you give it the type, and then you give it kind of initial size. But then after that, you can sort of use it in a pretty similar way um, to what you're used to using it. Um, uh, it, because it, it, it defines an operator. So, so this will look pretty similar to using just a regular array, right? But, but I'm going to go ahead and use this here. So, um, and we finally got done building here. Um, let's just show that when we run those tests, as we expect, um, our first failure now is at line 201. Um, because, yeah, I mean, it gets past this one here. Um, and and it, it gets past this line, but uh, but when we check that, um, we're failing um, because um, the process that's returned uh, isn't an actual process here. Um, so it's kind of a dummy process if you look at the, the get process um, function here. So. Um, so let's create a process control block. So, so we can get this test to pass here. And that might be all I do today here. And so all the time I've got. Um, but this is, this is the kind of stuff you have to do also. So you'll probably want to have like a, a, a list or something for your um, ready queue. Um, and you might want to use a list or something else, like maybe even a map or something for your uh, blocked, uh, your, your list of block processes. So, um, oops. So let, let's let's add our process control block here. So the process control block from chapter three is um, 
the, the, the data structure that, that basically holds all the processes that, that are currently being managed by the system. Right. And we'll create it so that we, um, so it needs to be fixed size. So we'll create it so that we can have um, a hundred items, all right? A hundred processes, all right? Um, so you need to include, oh, it's not array capital. It's, um, so again, case matters, but it's just array lowercase uh, for these standard template library arrays. But, we, but yeah, we need to include array if we want to use the array standard template type. So oh, I, I, I guess I included a few things up here. Um, probably that's because I, this, this was, these are from, I think I, in my example solution, I'm using lists and maps for some of these structures here. So anyway, if, if we include array, um, we should be able to create our process control block like this. Um, and this will have, be able to hold up to 100 processes for our simulation, so we're kind of hard coding an upper limit for our simulation in this case. Right? Um, and in this case, uh, go back. Let's go back down to new event here. So, so you know, I guess you know to create this. So, so we're just going to be creating a new process. So if you create a variable of type process. It'll create the new process. So here now we need to look at this process class in a little bit more detail, right? So processes are really just a single object that, that holds information about a process. Um, so this is like a, a, an entry in the process control block, okay? So, so really it, it just, uh, we, we're using a very simple idea of a process here, of, of the information we need to keep track of. This identifier, it's start time, uh, the event, if it's block, currently blocked, the event that it's waiting on, um, um, the, um, its current state, and so on, right? Oh, I'm sorry. So these are the, these are the things. So it's state, start time, the time, amount of time it's used. But a lot of the stuff um, is implemented for you if you use the process and if you call the processes um, member functions correctly. So, so anyway, what we want to do is we want to construct a process. So the an initial process, you want to use this non-default constructor. So you want to give it the process ID for the new process that's being created and the time that it's starting at, right? So, so all we need is um, our process ID um, and the, the current system time, uh, what's the current system time called? Um, system time. Let's give it a better name here. So, so let's make sure that compiles. So, so that's um, because I've, I've, I've added a line of code here, plus I also added something uh, here, a new um, member variable. So you should try not to add too much code before you make certain it's compiling. And running, so let's, let's check that that uh, builds still. Um, and the test should still run. Huh, I don't know why it's redoing the test there, which kind of sucks because now I have to wait for it to recompile that. Um, so while that's compiling, I, I think that should compile, but of course when we rerun it, um, it'll still come down here and fail at the same place. So, um, 
so yeah, I mean, to get this final um, thing to run, we're just going to need to put this new process into our process control block that we just created, and then we need to return that process correctly when we call get process, right? So if we look at get process right now, um, again, it's going to be a stub. It's going to probably create a process. So here, here's an example of creating a process. Where's my get process? So instead of scrolling through here, I should probably start using, you know, find and stuff. So um, so we'll search for get process there. There it is. So here it creates a new process um, and um, it returns it. Although it's creating the process dynamically here, notice. So, so but yeah, instead of doing that, we want to actually use some data structure. What um, once we're actually creating process correctly, um, use use a data structure and uh, return the process, right? So, okay, here, we're finally done building our tests. And then it did compile. So, so my standard template library array is fine, but um, um, if we run our tests, um, we're still doing the same, coming down to uh, line 201 here uh, and stopping. So, so let's see if we can get that, this test to pass here. Um, so if we go back to the, um, the new event, So whatever you're using for your data structure to store stuff, you need to, to, to store that in there. So arrays, like I said, work, allow you to, to use these pretty much the, like old style arrays, although it's a little bit more safe. So I might do something like that. Okay, so I've got a new process that we created. Um, and, and you know, because of the constructor, it's going to initialize the, the the start time to the current system time and the process identifier to the one that we just allocated for it. And and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore process zero here, so make it somewhat convenient. So now, if 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 in my get process, if I ask for process one, I can just look it up from my array using the process identifier directly, right? So this should copy the process into my process control block, but this initialized process. To process one here. So, um, and that should allow me to actually return it. So if we um, so if we go back to get process here, we don't really want to do this. We just want to access our process control block for that particular process ID. And okay? so again, I mean, you, you don't necessarily have to use an array or an old style C array. You know, you could use a, a, a better container like a list or um, something else. Uh, uh, but in that case, you might have to do a different thing to search for it. But um, um, something like this should be should work because. The, the process control block is just an array of processes, um, and if we get a particular one using the um, indexing, that is actually returning a process, right? Which is what we want. So, so we're going to return the reference to that process here. So I think that should work um, because now our new event is creating the process. Um, and we updated the next process ID, and we updated the number of active processes. Um, and then when we call get process, it should be returning that process that we just created. Um, and this is in state is already implemented for you. So um, processes um, have functions like the is in state. So is in state basically returns true if, if it's true that the process has an ID of one. Um, 
and it's in a ready state, um, and that its start time is one, and that its time used is zero, and so on. Okay, so so basically, this this is more of a convenience function for testing, but we're expecting the new process you create to to, to be in all of these that, that it's in a ready state, um, which which we might we might need to set that. So I think uh, our um, um, uh, we talk a little bit about that for the step two here for our assignment. So let's. Um, Let's build that. And run our test now. So, um, so this is still failing. Um, so here, so, so um, if you're wondering why, um, yeah, I can see that that's gonna be a little bit difficult here, but um, it, it's failing probably because we're not initializing everything correctly yet. So, so I, I think that we are initializing the, the start time to one and the process ID to one, but we, we, we maybe need to initialize the, um, the state to be ready here, okay? Um, let me just go, let's just go ahead and do that. So, because um, um, I'm pretty certain that's probably what it is. So if we just, put the process into a ready state um, after we create it here. Um, we should, um, uh, we may be able to, to pass all this, this test right now. So, um, So by, by putting it into a ready state, um, um, we should get that. So, so we should be initializing the process ID to one, the, the start time to one, and now we're making sure that the, that the ready state is one. Now these others um, depend on whether those are being initialized as the defaults in the constructor. Um, we could check that um, if we look at the constructor for the process here, although I need to go ahead and wrap up here. Um, so but yeah, let me just build and run. Um, but, but we could look at the constructor for our process and see how it's initializing these other things, the, the time used and, and, and the, the event ID and things, so. So if we build that, after we ready, we, we create the process, we make it ready, and then we put it into our process control block and we run, and then there. So now we're past 201, okay? So th this has gotten us basically past the point though where we're creating our first um, container, basically something to represent our process control block for this simulation. So now we can actually create processes and put them in our process control block and then we can get them back out of the simula simulator by calling git process. So now we're getting down. Now. So yeah, the next thing you need to do is maybe start working on the ready queue. So, so I put the process into a ready state, but I don't actually have a ready queue. You need a real queue for this, okay? Um, and the reason why I suggest you use a list, a standard template library list instead of a queue is because later on you have to implement where you display the contents of the ready queue. All right, and you can't iterate through um, a standard template library queue, so it's better to use like a list and then use like push, push to the uh, um, uh, back and then pop from the front uh, to, to use your list as a queue, right? Um, all right, so yeah, I kind of need to wrap up here. So that that's kind of to get you started. Um, hopefully everybody was at that point or was working on, you know, things like that or were wondering about how you'd implement a queue or something. Um, but, but yeah, you should really use your standard template library um, containers for this assignment, you know, especially for your like ready queue and your list of processes that are blocked, so. Um, all right, are there any kind of quick questions here before I stop the session? All right, so yeah, I need to kind of uh, end the session. Um, I will post this video as usual. Um, and if you have any other questions, you know, feel free to email me. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys later then.